just to clarify right off the bat, I am not a doctor, not a nurse, not a medical professional, and I don't even pretend to play one on TV. Hello and welcome to Michelle's Life on Repeat. I am going to give you guys a little update on my it's um, myalgic encephalomyelitis, otherwise known as chronic fatigue syndrome, and my fibromyalgia. Back in October, I made a video about um, the situation that I was struggling with. I had had a major flare up and it wasn't dying down. So we went off to the rheumatologist and we tried a few new things. And I wanted to let you know how that is going in case you have not um, tried these things. These are medicines. Or if your doctor has suggested them and you're like, I don't know anybody who's tried them. Well, you can say you know me. But back in October, or actually it was probably a little bit before I made that video in October, where I was constantly fatigued. My fatigue level was probably a, running every day at an eight or a nine. And funny thing for me is that my migraines will either be really dominant in my life or the chronic fatigue and the fibromyalgia. But rarely is one flared up and the other flared up at the same time to collide and really mess with my world. So at the time, migraines were sort of under control, but the chronic fatigue was unbearable. And with it, of course, is the aches and the pains that fibromyalgia brings with it. And so my rheumatologist ran a whole bunch of of lab work, blood work, and ruled out all these things. You know, every year she reruns the things she ran the year before, just in case, you know, a lupus wants to show up one day or arthritis wants to show up one day or whatever else they check for. And they're always checking the thyroid, which is always, thankfully in my case, been very normal never been out of range. And prior to me getting a complete hysterectomy, my iron was very low all the time. So that was causing a lot of my fatigues. So I encourage you, um, if you are going on the fatigue bus the day after day after day, do check in with your primary doctor, get a full gamut of blood work done, A to Z, check your minerals, check your um, B levels, check your iron levels, your vitamin D levels are very vital and how well your, your strength and your energy play a part in your life. So I encourage you to do that. But we had ruled everything back out again. So I said, all right, doctor, let's play the roll the dice game. And um, I have already tried antidepressants that for 12 years worked on my fibromyalgia. Did great. Um, really took care of that. And then when I flared up, I would add some anti-inflammatories called Celebrex along with some Flexerol for uh the relaxing of the muscles and occasionally some Valium to relax the muscles. And I still have those repertoires, not the antidepressant, but I still have the anti-inflammatories, the uh, muscle relaxers in my arsenal so that um, I can gauge and balance when I need some things. Not every day do I need them, but the key thing with chronic illness is staying on top of it so it doesn't go way out of kilter on one end of the scope and then you're playing catch up, trying to get your body back. But what we did was we started a Savella, which is uh, has another name, but I'll put that on the screen because I don't know it. I only know it as Savella, excuse me. So we started Savella and had to increase our way up and I am at a dose now that is working very, very well for my fibromyalgia. I don't have flare-ups. I haven't had flare-ups in the three months. Um, I do get the occasional aches and pains and um, this last week I actually pulled a muscle in my hip but uh, it wasn't fibromyalgia related. It was 
hemiplegic migraine related, but I've been playing recovery for a week on that hip, you know, limping and gimping, using my cane, using my anti-inflammatories, but the Savella has worked. Um, it didn't work right away. It took weeks and we had to slowly increment it up to where I got to where I thought it was working perfect. And then I pushed it a little bit over that amount because I have a built a pill cutter I can cut those pills up and she says you just cut them up into portions um, we start with the hundred milligram tablet cut it into 50 cut it into 25 cut it into 12.5s whatever we need to do because um, here in the United States when you have insurance generally the same bottle of 12.5 milligram pills is the same price tag as the 50 milligram pills or the 100 milligram pills so it's beneficial to get the biggest dose you can for your money and cut it yourself at home if you haven't um, tried that yet but we incremented up to the point where I went over where I was um, I was feeling perfectly normal went over and then I started feeling cruddy I started feeling nauseous and not well and then I realized that was too much and we backed it down and I have been at a great place with that so very very thankful the second thing I wanted to mention today was the chronic fatigue syndrome or the myal myalgic encephalomyelitis. I think I got that correct this time. And that is the fatigue, the fatigue that just won't go away. You can't sleep it away. You can't caffeinate it away. You can't, you know, Epsom salt bath it away. It's just so present where I was spending easily 14 to 16 hours in a 24 hour period asleep or in my bed trying to get some form of sleep. Not that it was all deep sleep, good sleep or REM sleep. It was just fatigue in the bed. And we started low dose naltroxin. They call it LDN. And it in its biggest form um, is normally called naltroxone and people will use that physicians will use that for people who may be trying to withdraw from alcohol or a drug that they may have uh, become addicted to and it helps ease the coming off of it also from what I've read makes it where if you were a heavy drinker or an alcoholic I'm um, I'm not there, so I don't know for certain, but if you were to take the naltroxone at the high dose, the 40, the 50, the 60 dose, and then consume alcohol, you would feel sick. Your stomach would feel yuck, your head would feel yuck, you might vomit it up, and it would push away the drive for you to ever really want to pick up another drink again. That's the concept. But in the process of this drug and all the studies they have done, they have come across and found that in very low doses. Now, someone who's struggling with addiction gets probably at least a starter dose of 50. But they have found that low dose, as in 1.3 milligrams of a dose, um, it was helping people with fatigue. And so they did some studies. There are studies out there for chronic fatigue patients where they took low dose naltroxone. And so we did it. We tried it and it is three months, three and a half months in. And it wasn't an instant, ooh, I feel good thing. No, it took six, maybe eight weeks, maybe, till I found out that this was really working. And you start at the 1.3, you take it for a week, then you bump it up to two tablets, then three, but the highest dose you go is 4.0 or 4.369, something like that, uh, milligrams. And that is it. And it has the effect on my body and hopefully your body, if you try it, that you really do have energy. My husband says, how come you don't need a nap anymore? And I, I may, I may use all my energy up and I am tired very early in the night, but I'm not fatigued from the moment I wake up till the moment I can crawl in bed again. And that is a drastic difference. 
I encourage you, if you have not looked into it, if your doctor has said not suggested it, it's not very prevalent. Um, not every doctor is aware that you can get a low dose of it. You do have to have your doctor call it into a compounding pharmacy. There's not necessarily a compounding pharmacy in every corner of the, of the nation here in the U.S. But if you can't find one in your area, let me know in a, in a message down below or send me an email because my pharmacy, the compounding pharmacy, they have told me that if I ever move, they can still produce the prescription and ship it out to me. It's not a problem for them. They get orders in from other states and as long as your doctor calls in, types in, texts in, talks to them on the phone and says, this is what I need, a low dose naltroxone. And my pharmacist at the compounding uh, facility has even said that two of her staff members suffer with chronic fatigue syndromes and they are taking it and finding wonderful, great results. So I'm not the first person to show up at the compounding pharmacy for that. So I encourage you, if you have not heard about it, your doctors haven't heard about it, look it up on the internet, research it, bring some printable work with you into your next doctor's appointment and say, can we? look into this. Now, if your doctor says no, mm -mm, then you say, okay, I will go find another doctor. Now, in reality, uh, if you go in humbly and you hand them resources and it's your body, I always say to the doctor when they're a little leery about giving me something, I say, what is the harm in trying? What is the benefit in trying? And sometimes they have to pause and go, you're right, it's your body. And if it may work, who am I to say no? I did it once with um, oxygen for my cluster migraines. I got an oxygen tank ordered at home. And my doctor was really uh, vas vacillating, what's the word? Um, she was, she was like, mm, well, see, you don't fit all the categories of a cluster migraine. And I said, uh, I said in all sweetness to her, I did say, now it is oxygen. Um, it's, it's not as potent as a pill that's mixed in a chem, chemist shop and bombarded into your body. And, you know, so what is really the downside of me trying an oxygen mass at a 200 rate flow rate for 15 minutes and to see if it will take away the migraine, the cluster migraines? And she's like, you're right. What is, you know, it's not going to harm you to try it. So always ask, always be persistent, always, um, um, oh, I forget what the word is. Always educate yourself so that you can come prepared with something if it may be new to your doctor. And sometimes in this day and age, you can send a text message or a message in your my charts to your physician and say, hey, can you look into this? I've heard some great news about this and I wanted to try it. And she might say, or he might say, come on in, make an appointment and we'll discuss it in person. But it drops the seed in their brain for them to look it up, talk to their colleagues, see what all the hubba bub may be about it. And it may be the one thing that helps you with your heavy chronic fatigue. And maybe you have fatigue from a something else. Maybe, you know, one of the other conditions you struggle with produces a heavy fatigue. It might work for that. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Don't even pretend to be one. But I do say advocate for yourself and try to always uh, politely work with your st doctor staff to see what you can do to elevate your wellness. If it requires another pill on top of what you're already taking or taking out one pill and trying something else, it's your body and you want the best for yourself, the best that you can do. So I hope that um, this information helped someone out there. If you have not tried Savella or low dose naltroxone, maybe it is something that might work for you. And so run everything I say past your doctors and see what they say for you would be well. And if it 
doesn't jive with the doctor you're working with, maybe it's time to find a new doctor. Always have medical staff in your corner as opposed to you up against the wall and them dictating to you what you will do with your body. I wish you wellness. I wish you peace. And until we talk again, bye-bye.